here in just a few minutes for Sergeant Michael Abate. Uh, right now we're taking a look at a marquee. It looks like that is on Caesars Palace. So many tributes over the last week or so for Sergeant Michael Abate. Now we do want to tell you a little bit about the man that we know he was. So he was born on December 22nd, 1985. He was just 37 years old, born right here in Las Vegas, lived most recently in Henderson, a true native here of the Valley. According to Nevada State Police, Sergeant Abate, badge number 304, joined the department back in December of 2013. So he has been serving this community for quite some time. He was recently actually promoted to sergeant just last month in November. So really promising career cut short as well. Leaders with Nevada State Police say he was dedicated to serving the state with exceptional commitment and pride. And today what you can expect to see is his badge number 304 as well as the badge number of his colleague Trooper Alberto Felix 502 that will be draped across the badges of Nevada State police troopers as they uh, make their way down the procession. Right now we see the casket starting to move and we expect it to uh, make its way down to Central Church. Kelsey, if you want to tell us a little bit more about that journey. Yeah, so the procession gets underway here uh, and is going to be including some closures th that you can expect along this procession as they head from downtown to Henderson where Central Church is. Now the RTC is confirming a series of those closures include Interstate 15 southbound from Washington Avenue to Sahara the eastbound Sahara to Las Vegas Boulevard, southbound Las Vegas Boulevard from Sahara to the 215, eastbound 215 from Las Vegas Boulevard to US 95, northbound US 95 to Russell, and tentatively those road closures will be in place from 9.30 a.m. through 10.45. Drivers are expected to, or advised to expect those delays and use alternate routes through those closed areas this morning. And if you do happen to catch yourself in the middle of that procession, you'll want to pull over and pay your respects as this is our community's final goodbye to Sergeant Abate. As you can see that this procession typically, as we saw on Friday, it's going to include hundreds of different uh, agencies, including police vehicles there, fire departments, uh, police agencies across Southern Nevada, as well as across our region. Uh, you can also expect to see EMS as well as tow truck drivers as what we saw on Friday as part of this procession. Uh, overpasses, you'll likely see some signs laid out for the sergeant as well, uh, saying their final goodbyes and thank you to his decades of service to our Las Vegas community. Now, as we watch this procession get underway, I wanna talk a little bit more about his personal life aside from you know, serving our community. His obituary uh, says that Sergeant Abante was also a father and a husband and a very good one at that. His friends and family writing that you could tell that he was such a great father and husband by the loving smiles on his children and wife's faces. Um, it, They've also, uh, some articles online show that his sister is a professional race car driver and she has written in articles and publications that her inspiration came from her brother, Michael. He was a go-kart racer in the 90s and that inspired her to pursue professional driving, saying that he had lots of achievements in the 90s. And uh, we also saw that uh, it was a kart association writing on his memorial page. So uh, a man of many talents, clearly, and a man who was loved by so many across our community. Uh, he is certainly going to be missed after decades of service. He surely will. And we thank him for those decades of service to our community. It's important to note that you know, this community is in mourning and it has been for about a week and a half now. And we're not just dealing with the loss of, of one dedicated state trooper. We're dealing with the loss of two. Of course, we mentioned that service that was held for Trooper Alberto Felix on Friday. There we got to learn a lot about what he meant to the people who loved him, who worked with him. And today we're hoping to learn more about Sergeant Michael Abate and, and exactly what he enjoyed to do outside of work, like the racing. And of course, what he was like on the job, I'm sure an incredibly dedicated and hard-working sergeant. Uh, he was recently promoted, as we mentioned, so that's certainly a testament to his dedication to service here in our community. And again, this community is really dealing with, with a lot of heavy loss right now. We want to bring in Randy Sutton. He is a retired Metro lieutenant. And Randy, we can safely assume that a lot of the folks who were at that service on Friday are going to be here today. Uh, talk about that emotional burden, especially for first responders of dealing with these losses while continuing to serve the community. You know, there was, um, on Friday, there was such a, uh, an outpouring, uh, an incredible 
uh, response by law enforcement from all over the country. Um, you know, the, there were police cars from from many, many states, and it's a it's a very heavy burden. I, I've got to tell you that when law enforcement officers um, respond to the death of one of their own, it's it's a, it, it it's something that is a huge reality check to them. You know, every one of these officers, he, these two troopers died um, it, by being hit by a drunk driver, which is just, just such an incredible, incredible waste. Um, and and the, the, the number of police deaths, um, you know, is, uh, is felt by every cop in the country. And, and then, of course, you have the felonious assaults. More than 350 police officers have been shot so far this year. So when, when the death of, a, of, a, of an officer, um, it's not just the local law enforcement community that feels that pain. It's from cops from all over the nation. And, and here's the other harsh reality. Everybody knows that they could be next. It's certainly a reminder of the, of the mortality and, and how you know, these officers are humans as well. They're also heroes and uh, certainly expecting to see a tribute fit for a hero today. Now, we've seen so many tributes across the valley over the last week and a half. Uh, we've seen Marquise, as we showed you earlier, uh, displaying the pictures of Sergeant Michael Abate as well as his colleague Trooper Alberto Felix. Over the weekend, we saw tributes at the Vegas Golden Knights game, at the Las Vegas Raiders game. This is a community that celebrates its law enforcement and is showing that right now as we watch this procession make its way down the I-15. Now, we're expecting them to exit uh, east onto Sahara to Las Vegas Boulevard, eventually making their way down Las Vegas Boulevard. And over at the Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign, we're actually expected to see a pretty large contingent of people and some flags and signs. Just a really nice display of support uh, for Sergeant Michael Abate as well as Trooper Alberto Felix. And a temporary memorial was also put in place outside of the Nevada State Police Headquarters. That's near the 215 and South Decatur. Now that memorial put in place for both Sergeant Michael Abate as well as Trooper Alberto Felix after their tragic passing on November 30th. Now those honoring the fallen troopers left many flowers covering the silver interceptor. It's a gorgeous display outside of Nevada State Police headquarters. You also saw uniform patches left by visiting officers from other jurisdictions as far as New York, uh, also including California, Washington State and Texas. And that really kind of leads to your point, Randy, that officers across the country feel this so deeply when they lose a brother in law enforcement. And I can really appreciate seeing, you can see the closures there on the 15 at Bonanza as the procession uh, enters the freeway. Uh, it's so nice to see the way that the law enforcement community shows up for each other and, and each other's families in this. We've, we've kind of talked about this on Friday as well. Now that Sergeant Abante is leaving behind family as we are in the, the right in the thick of the holiday season, how uh, law enforcement officers often show up for the family members of the fallen officers. You know, it's a, it is uh, the Thin Blue Line family. It, it really truly exists in circumstances like this. Um, you know, the leaving of the patches, uh, that's very symbolic to the to, uh, police. You know, the uh, re leaving remembrances behind. But this is just the beginning of what's going to be taking place in honor of this trooper. Um, in, uh, in, in May, uh, his name will be carved in the granite of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C. And his name will be revealed along with, um, with, with uh, the other troopers and every other police officer who lost his life in the line of duty this year. And it's a, that is, that's a, an incredible uh, journey, if you will, um, in, in Washington, D.C., because that memorial is like hallowed ground for law enforcement. It, it bears the name of every single police officer, law enforcement officer, who's given their lives in the line of duty since the beginning of this nation. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredibly... Uh, I guess the word uh, that, that I can that I can use is symbolic place to be. And during National Police Week, which will be in May, there will be 30 to 40 thousand law enforcement officers who will descend on Washington uh, in order to pay their respects. And also the families, the families of, of these troopers will 
be given the opportunity, and I'm sure they will accept it, to be in Washington for the honors that take place there. Um, it is a, uh, it's a very symbolic time, and uh, there will be dignitaries from all over the country. There will be cops there from all over the world who will all be in uniform, who will be paying their respects to the, these troopers and, and the other men and women of law enforcement who made that ultimate sacrifice. Certainly bringing some comfort knowing that people all over the country and really all over the world are going to know what Sergeant Michael Abate meant to this community. And that's kind of on full display right now as we watch this procession continue to make its way down I-15. It's a long procession, which just gives you an idea of, of how much this community comes out and, and supports its law enforcement as you see them making their way down. And good to see a lot of drivers also, you know, getting out of the way and understanding the importance of, of what we're witnessing here today. And a reminder as well for anyone who would like to pay their respects to Sergeant Abante, the memorial and celebration of life service at Central Church is set to get underway right around 1030. On Friday, we saw that delayed by about an hour or so because it took so long for this procession of hundreds of uh, police vehicles to make their way to Central Church, but uh, a memorial service set to get underway at 1030 and it is open to the public for everyone to hear about uh, what Sergeant Abate was like for his family and friends as well as his co-workers. Uh, really just moving stories that we heard on Friday about Trooper Felix and we're looking forward to learning more about Sergeant Abate and the man that he was protecting our community, protecting the city that he was born and raised in and, and we appreciate that and thank him for his service as they make their way uh, past the 15 and symphony here. And if you are watching this and wondering, hey, how can I maybe help Sergeant Michael Abate's family? Because certainly they're dealing with big emotional and, of course, the financial loss as well. We have to mention that the only approved donation point that we know of at this moment is the Injured Police Officers Fund. So you can head over to IPOF.Vegas if you'd like to make a contribution there. We sure are sure the family would definitely appreciate that. And we've already seen, as we've mentioned, so much support for these troopers all across our community. Uh, the IPOF actually had a fundraiser last Thursday for both of the troopers. Um, they held the event at the Nevada Coin Mart at South Jones in West Flamingo. All the proceeds from that cookout and the merchandise sold there benefit the families of the fallen troopers. So again, if you are wanting to make a difference and help this, these families, it is not too late. Just go to IPOF.Vegas and you can do so there. And it's a fresh week and a, still a difficult week for so many in our community. Last week, the UNLV shooting, as well as honoring the life of Trooper Felix, a very emotional day for law enforcement. And they're here to do it all over again to give Sergeant Abate the final goodbye that he deserves honoring his life. And uh, Randy, you've kind of talked about officers need to compartmentalize this a bit because they have to get right back to serving our community and protecting our community uh, after saying goodbye in this this way and that can be so difficult for them. It truly is and you know every officer that is participating in this uh, in this procession and um, will be attending the funeral there's uh, so the, the officers who are who are um, appearing here there, there's there's the, the honor guards from all over the southern Nevada uh, are participating in the honors that, that are going to be afforded to uh, the sergeant and then there will be, you know, uniformed officers from all over the nation that will um, participate in the uh, at, when when the when the uh, when the casket arrives at the church. Um, you will see that there will be a massive double line of uniformed officers standing at parade rest um, as the as the casket goes by them, and when it comes to a stop. The, uh, those officers will come to attention and they will salute the casket. Once again, hugely symbolic. And you are a part of the Honor Guard as well. Talk a little bit about the importance of, of having that to honor these fallen officers here and the importance that those in the Honor Guard feel while they are performing these duties and uh, moving along with these traditions. Yeah, thank you for asking me that. You know. Um, I served a total of 24 years with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, retiring as a lieutenant. But 15 of those years, um, from being a, a patrol officer through all the way to the time I retired, um, was spent as a, as a member of the Las Vegas Metro Police Honor Guard. And that was both 
one of the most important duties that I that I had, and also some of the most painful. Um, you know, it's, it's, it is the only voluntary unit in, in the police agency. And it's voluntary for a reason. Uh, those that participate are particularly um, involved in, in wanting to uh, play a role that, that uh, can comfort the families of those who, who pass in the line of duty. And um, I buried a lot of friends. And so when when I uh, sit here and I look at uh, what's taking place, it does bring back a lot of memories. And uh, not all of them are good, I can tell you that. You know, when you're talking about something as, as sad as, as, you know, seeing the families and, and watching, um, you know, the pain etched on their face. But these, these men and women that, that perform in the Honor Guard, that, that volunteer for that duty, um, they, uh, they do an amazing job. You'll see them La last Friday. We, we saw, the, now the lead honor guard will be the Nevada State Police Honor Guard. And we saw them perform um, incredibly on Friday, which I'm sure we will see again today. Their, their movements were, were well choreographed and then working with honor guard um, officers from all over the, the country. This will, be, this will be beautiful at the same time it is, uh, it is so sad. And you make a really good point here is that uh, members of the Honor Guard that maybe we saw in Trooper Felix's service on Friday, those may be the same Honor Guard members who are having to turn around just a couple of days later and do the same service at this ceremony today. So certainly heavy emotional burden. And they're also kind of tasked with being very stoic and kind of unable to kind of break down, which understandably they might be feeling like they want to. So uh, definitely kudos to them for kind of maintaining that sto stoicism as they continue to provide this service to our community. And as we watch this uh, procession make its way, continue to make its way rather down the I-15, you notice that the um, police officers on bikes are at the front of the procession. Now, Randy, you said that's often a very big part of the symbolism, right, is having the Nevada State Police at the front of this procession. Exactly. So you, the motors, the motor units, which are you know the motorcycle units of the uh, of the of the agencies, um, in these processions, they are, are always take the lead, and they lead the way. And you can see how skilled they are. Um, this is really um, something that is 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 a display of unity at the same time. You see that they're they they ride alongside each other. Their their uh, their skill in being able to um, operate those motorcycles, which are heavy as hell, uh, especially at slow speeds, um, it shows how well trained they are. And of course, they will lead the procession, and then um, the the casket, and then the family will be right behind in that in that large uh, vehicle that's that's directly behind the family. Of course, is you know they they this is for them as well as the community. So. Of course, they're the they're the they're the ones who bear the this this you know incredibly heavy loss. And powerful images to watch as they you know continue on this route and are so so synchronized even across agencies as we had mentioned as well and kind of looking at that sliver of Sergeant Abate's personal life and past and hearing that he was a professional go kart driver, it is no wonder that he ended up being a Nevada State Police Trooper where. The skill set of driving is so important, and he now works to keep our roadways safe, our interstate safe, and uh, really our state safe. And I, I know that Randy, you had said that driving was was such an important skill, and and officers do so day in and and day out. So it's clear that he was a very skilled sergeant. You know, um, when it comes down to line of duty deaths, the um, the accidental deaths due to traffic collisions. Um, is almost equal to the number of felonious deaths, which, which shows that you know, the danger is everywhere. Um, police officers spend a tremendous amount of time in their vehicles and, and working traffic assignments. Now, you know, this, this pair of deaths illustrates that, um, that every, every duty that the officers have when they're, when they're on duty is a hazardous duty. You know, these, these troopers were struck by a drunk driver when they were performing, um, you know, their, which was essentially 
um, a very routine duty of, of a check the welfare of a, of a driver who was on the side of the road. And um, every time you're out of that vehicle, you know, especially the, the troopers, I got, I, you know, can you imagine these vehicles are, are, go, are going past them at 70, 60, 70 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so troopers around the country that are on these freeways and highways, it truly is a very dangerous place to be, even just getting out of your car. And we heard on Friday that uh, one of the troopers who passed, Trooper Alberto Felix, was passionate about traffic safety. That was the one thing that he was really excited to bring is, is more safety to our roads here in the valley. So just so heartbreaking to see that that is how he died uh, by an alleged drunk driver, according to uh, Nevada State Police. So really sad to see kind of a life snuffed out way too early, two lives snuffed out way too early. Uh, now, as we continue to watch this procession make its way down Las Vegas Boulevard, we are expecting over at the Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign for there to be a group of people gathered there with signs and flags honoring both Sergeant Michael Abate and Trooper Alberto Felix, as well as the shooting victims over in that UNLV tragedy that happened on campus last week. So. Uh, Kelsey, it's been a heavy week and a half here in the Valley. A very, very heavy week. And uh, it's really kind of incredible to see how the Las Vegas community is so strong. One tragedy after another. We saw it after one October, the way that strangers became neighbors because we're all dealing with grief in this and and really trauma when, when you see what can happen uh, in our valley as far as these shootings and uh, you know a drunk driver according to police hitting these troopers it can be very difficult but showing up for the community is something that we've done time and time again where people you know help the the fallen officers families by showing up to these fundraisers to make sure that they can have uh, you know a nice holiday season as nice as they they can have here um it it's really moving to see also the way that the casinos and marquees, these iconic structures, they have changed that into memorials for these troopers, thanking them for their service as well. Um, we also saw tow truck drivers honoring uh, some of the, the troopers over the weekend as well. We saw that Trooper Alberto Felix as well as Sergeant Abate were honored with a memorial drive two Saturdays ago. It was local tow truck companies along with the Nevada State Police Highway Patrol driving in a procession from the Dula Community Center off Las Vegas Boulevard in Bonanza to the Nevada State Police Headquarters near the 215 and South Decatur. And that was also just truly a moving, moving thing to see. We talked a little bit about this on Friday. Tow truck drivers often also responding to emergency scenes and kind of a, a relationship with police officers and nice to see them honoring them and saying their final goodbyes as well. You know, the tow truck drivers, they, uh, they have a very close relationship with law enforcement, especially the street cops. Um, you know, they, uh, they respond to some of these horrific accidents and they, they too are exposed to the carnage that uh, that that law enforcement officers see at these uh, at these horrendous wrecks that take place, and um, and when 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 you share that type of uh, common experience, it it tends to bring you closer to one another. So the fact that these that these tow truck uh, operators um, care enough that they will come out on their own time and and play a role in this very symbolic gesture of respect and dignity and and love it's a it's a it's something that that people should should honor and respect and you'll notice that this procession not only puts that relationship between tow truck drivers and police on full display it also puts that relationship between other first responders and police on full display like when it comes to you know fire officials ems that is such a close relationship and when any first responder passes, they really all work together to make sure they put on the best tribute possible, as we're seeing right now, really making that single file line down Las Vegas Boulevard. It's incredible to see all of these people coming together to remember Sergeant Michael Abate. We do want to share with you, if you're just tuning in now, what we know about him so far. Of course, we're hoping to learn more at that service later on today at Central Church. But as far as what we know right now, Sergeant Michael Abate was born back on December 22nd, 1985. He was just 37 years old when he was killed, and he was born right here in Las Vegas, lived most recently in Henderson. According to Nevada State Police, 
Sergeant Abate, badge number 304, joined the department back in December of 2013. So he has been serving in his capacity with Nevada State Police for about a decade now, but he was recently promoted to sergeant just last month. So that makes it even more heartbreaking when you hear that he had taken that extra step in his career and uh, passed so shortly after. Now leaders with Nevada State Police say he really dedicated his career to serving the state, serving his state with exceptional commitment and pride. So sad to see a, a son of Las Vegas, a son of Clark County here uh, pass away. Yeah, he's a father and a, a husband. He was a brother. He, he was um, clearly, clearly so loved by his family and friends uh, as seen on his memorial page as well. So many pouring in tributes, uh, saying their final goodbyes to the sergeant, calling him a hero for his commitment to his community, as well as his commitment to his family, his uh, his children, as well as his wife. And we've heard from different racing organizations that he was a former go-kart racer and won many achievements in the 90s. Uh, his sister uh, writing a tribute uh, in a former article about her racing. She's a professional racing driver here in the U.S. and wrote that her brother actually inspired her to get into that profession after seeing him do so well in uh, go-kart racing. So a man who has inspired so many people across our community. And uh, this is the final goodbye for Sergeant Abante. You can see the procession continues to make its way down Las Vegas Boulevard, where we expect to see those flags at the Las Vegas welcome sign. You'll also, uh, when we get a view of Central Church, you'll see that fire crews will be there hanging a very large American flag um, and dozens and dozens of uh, police and civilians as well there to say their final goodbyes. Central Church holding those memorials um, for hundreds of people who are, are, are able to pay their respects there and it's nice to see that you know there is a spot for large memorials like that here in our community. Absolutely they did a great job with Trooper Felix's memorial celebration of life service on Friday and Kelsey you talked a lot about um, kind of the tributes we've seen online and how we kind of learned more about Sergeant Michael Abate through that. We've also seen uh, tributes online from various officials all across the, the country really. Now we do have um, a tweet from Governor Joe Lombardo. Uh, he posted this shortly after uh, both troopers died. He said quote I'm profoundly saddened by the deaths of two of our brave Nevada State Troopers who were killed. This is a devastating loss for Nevada law enforcement, the city of Las Vegas and our entire state. As we mourn these troopers, we will never forget their bravery, courage and sacrifice. We saw Governor Joe Lombardo at the service for Trooper Felix on Friday and likely expecting him to see uh, expecting to see him rather again today. We also saw Catherine Cortez Masto. Uh, a lot of folks coming out and trying to show their appreciation for these troopers who gave everything, made the ultimate sacrifice for our community. Trooper Felix also awarded a Medal of Valor during Friday's memorial service. That's something that we can also expect to see during today's memorial service. If you could, Randy, explain the importance be behind a Medal of Valor. Well, the Medal of Valor is one of the highest awards that can be uh, given. There's two, two of the ma major awards, the Medal uh, for Valor and the Medal of Honor. And uh, both of those are the, are the highest earned um, uh, medals in, in the police agencies. So the fact that, that posthumously it's being awarded to these troopers is a sign of immense respect uh, that the agency had for the troopers. So um, that is something that, uh, that will no doubt be, uh, be placed in a, in a shadow box and it will be, you know, on the on the wall for the family to remember forever. Um, you know, it's a it's a beautiful medal. Um, the symbolism, of course, is it doesn't even need to be stated, but it it is something that will it's something tangible that the family can see, along with the folded flag. Uh, they will be given at the at the end of the um, service the uh, the flag which is you saw draped on the coffin will be folded in the, in the military fashion uh, by the honor guard. And then that, f that flag will be passed to um, the, the highest ranking officer uh, for the Nevada State Police or the governor, um, which, whichever chooses to hand that off to the widow. 
And I got to tell you that, that having, having experienced that, uh, that moment many times during my police career, it's, that's, one of the most, um, that's one of the most heartbreaking uh, moments of, of this entire service is the finality of when that flag is passed to the, to the survivors. It's, uh, it's very poignant and it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, you could certainly feel the weight of that moment on Friday when they did that for Trooper Felix's family. Now what we're looking at right now is you can see all those well-wishers uh, lined up on Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, the casket actually just passed the Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas sign just a few moments ago, and we could see some folks gathered there. Uh, I believe a local man had put up a flags for both Trooper Felix and Sergeant Michael Abate and the number of flags representing their years of service. So there were 10 up for Sergeant Michael Abate. We know he joined Nevada State Police back in 2013. So he served our community for 10 years, surely a decade of incredible hard work for our community. And it's really nice to see all these people coming out and, and showing their support. Because as we said before, Las Vegas is a community that loves its law enforcement as it should. It's uh, clear when we're looking at this Las Vegas welcome sign here and all of the flags, the thin blue line flags that were outside of that Las Vegas sign, that it is a community that celebrates its law enforcement and its dedication and really sacrifice to our community here. That man, that local man, John Wadby, who is a veteran, he worked closely with law enforcement as well. He says he will be placing a banner, dozens of flags here at the Las Vegas welcome sign on Monday morning here. And this is to honor both Sergeant Abate as well as Trooper Felix. And he said when we talked to him about, you know, why he is doing this, he said, it's somebody's husband, their brother, their son, and there's going to be empty seats at the Christmas table this year. And he, you know, of course, feels that loss deeply for those families. And um, we send our condolences to everyone who is mourning Sergeant Abate today. Uh, this procession continues to give me chills really when we see the way that not only the law enforcement community, but also the entire Vegas Valley shows up. We've seen it also online, you know, people who are watching this via live stream, sending their comments and their condolences. Um, it's something that people who are watching at home here really feel very, very deeply, uh, especially for those who have law enforcement ties, because we know that the families are also, you know, they make sacrifices as well, knowing that their loved one walking out that door is walking into some, pen, some potential danger here. Um, so it, a devastating loss for our community as well as the family and friends of Sergeant Abate. And if you're watching this and wondering how can I help the family and friends of Sergeant Michael Abate, well, the Injured Police Officers Fund is really the best and, and verified way for you to contribute to their family, which is feeling certainly a big emotional and financial hole. We know he was a father as well. So if you'd like to donate through that, just go to IPOF.Vegas. Now, right now we are continuing to see this procession make its way down Las Vegas Boulevard. We saw uh, the front of it pass by Las Vegas Boulevard in Town Square just a few moments ago. Next up, they're going to head east onto the 215, then onto the 95 North, and finally they'll exit at East Russell and finish at 1001 New Beginnings Drive in Henderson. That will be at Central Christian Church. So uh, we are definitely looking forward to seeing that contingent make its way down there, and we know it is going to be a beautiful ceremony if Friday was any sign of what they're able to put on down there. Yeah, we have the tissues ready to go here uh, because it's just been an emotional couple of weeks uh, dealing with, with the loss to our community. And we've seen the way that even our professional sports teams, you mentioned Anjali, they were honoring both troopers over the weekend during their games. They've also sent out condolences via social media, VGK honoring the troopers uh, earlier this month saying we honor and remember brave Highway Patrol officers, Sergeant Michael Abate and Trooper Alberto Felix lost in the line of duty on November 30th. Both dedicated their careers to serving our community with commitment and pride. And we know VGK uh, continues to show up for law enforcement as well and the way that it's showed up for our community in, in the wake of 1 October. Henderson Silver Knights also honoring the troopers before puck drop during the day uh, after troopers were killed. They say we honor the lives of Nevada State Police Sergeant Michael Labonte and Trooper Alberto Felix who were tragically lost in the line of duty. The Henderson Silver Knights extending their deepest condolences to their families and friends and the men and women they served alongside. And that is something that we've learned. You know, these troopers, it's 
they are family. They're spending really most of their, their week with their coworkers and colleagues trying to, to keep each other's morale up. As we learned on Friday with Trooper Felix, how he keeps his snack bar handy for his former, <laughs> for his fellow troopers. And um, th that's something that really shows the, the brotherhood that comes with working in law enforcement with, with your friends, essentially. Uh, you're 100% right. And, you know, and learning more um, about Trooper Felix, it was, uh, you know, as, as sad and as heartbreaking, you know, we, we were sitting here with some smiles on our faces, hearing about the kind of guy he was mm -hmm. and, and his care for, he was truly a leader. Even, you know, when we talked about him, he, uh, he started late in life uh, becoming a police officer because he had, he had uh, done 20 some years serving in the Air Force. So, um, it, you know, it, it, it showed his dedication. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing at this celebration of life and getting to know Sergeant Abate. But I, I want to go back to one thing that we, we talked about a little bit earlier, and that is about the, um, the honor and the care that this community has for its police. You know, having served here for so many years and having, um, you know, witnessed the, the deaths of many law enforcement officers here locally, um, this, this city has been amazing with the support that it shows their law enforcement. I mean, you know, the, the casinos are not in the business of being people-oriented places. You know, they're, they're businesses. And yet they, they go out of their way to show their respect. And it costs money for them to do it. Um, and, and also the generosity of this community. The generosity of this community is, is, is incredible. Um, you know, the, 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 common, the common citizen here um, has shown that they care about their cops in, in so many ways. And, and I can tell you, for, you know, quite honestly, that the, that the police officers in this community feel that. And, it, it, and it, it, it really has an effect on their morale. I'm sure that things like that do not go unnoticed, especially because being in law enforcement is already an incredibly difficult and dangerous career and one that takes a toll on your mental health as you had talked about. So for any law enforcement personnel watching now, I know that you have uh, you founded the Wounded Blue kind of talking about not only the physical injuries that officers deal with here, but also the mental injuries that officers are dealing with. This being a part of it, having to bury their brothers in blue and just the mental toll that that can take. Oh, this is this this incident with the loss of these two officers is gonna have a tremendous effect on the lives of the, his coworkers. Um, you know, I, I, the organization that, that you, you referred to is the Wounded Blue, and we are um, the national assistance and support organization for injured and disabled law enforcement officers. Uh, it's a nationwide charity, and uh, we've helped more than 14,000 American law enforcement officers since we, uh, since we uh, opened our doors back in May of 2019, which is an astounding number. And we recognize injuries as being the physical injuries, but also the emotional and psychological injuries. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a saying that post-traumatic stress can be as real as a bullet. And we have seen that, um, unfortunately, the suicide rate for law enforcement officers is, um, is something that is not talked about a great deal, but it is roughly two to, to five times the number of officers who die in the line of duty will take their own lives. And that's a heartbreaking statistic. And so the, the Wounded Blue reaches out to these men and women who are serving or have served. And so uh, any law enforcement that are, that are watching this show today, um, I want to make sure that they know that our organization exists for them. And they can reach out to me personally, randy at thewoundedblue.org. It's randy at thewoundedblue.org. And, uh, and we are there for you. We, we have a, a, we have a, a tagline at, at the Wounded Blue, and that's never forgotten, never alone. Randy, we thank you so much for the work that you do for all of our officers locally and across the country who have dealt with injuries or losses in the line of duty. And now as we continue to watch this procession make its way down Las Vegas Boulevard and head on to the 215 here shortly, we want to send things over to our Abel Garcia, who is live at Central Church. That's where that celebration of life service will begin. Abel, a big group of people out there behind you right now. 
Yeah, most certainly Anjali and Kelsey. I mean, it is unfortunate that we are here at Central Church once again under these circumstances, losing an officer, losing a member of our law enforcement is never easy. And now we are here to honor Sergeant Michael Abate. You can see right here in front of Central Church, the hundreds of members of Honor Guard from different law enforcement agencies throughout the nation lined up right here in front. But well, we will see Michael Abate's casket going through here before he enters Central Church to begin his celebration of life again such a difficult time right now to have to go through this all over again. We were here Friday morning and again, you also felt that somber, eerie feeling here at Central Church as many are mourning the loss of not only Trooper Alberto Felix, but also Sergeant Michael Abate. So young, his life was taken so, so soon. Of course, again, he was on I-15 doing his job, going on the side of the road, going out of his way to help somebody behind the wheel when all of a sudden his life was taken from him along with Trooper Alberto Felix. So again, it's never easy for us to be here during these circumstances. It's truly difficult, but it is incredible to see the amount of support from so many individuals here right now. Again, you are seeing that beautiful flag that's right now draping over where Trooper and Sergeant Michael Abate will be passing right underneath. We also have just so many different individuals from our community who are here right now. We also saw Mayor Carolyn Goodman show up here right now as well to show her respect and to all also honor Sergeant Michael Abate. So again, these circumstances are never easy for us. It is never easy for us to be out here and to cover these very devastating and unfortunate situations, but it's truly remarkable just to see how Vegas is so resilient and so strong, especially during such a difficult, difficult time. Again, Michael Abate, he wasn't just a member of Nevada State Police. He wasn't just a sergeant. He was also a father. He was also a son, and he was also a loving husband. So of course, very difficult circumstances. We've been talking to some Nevada State Troopers here as well who are telling us the impact Sergeant Michael Abate played all over, really, not only in this community, but really just as an individual who has been so supportive. They call him kind, intellectual, intelligent, somebody who is truly going to be missed. And he was just such a bright light in every single room that he went into. Now, of course, I think one of the most impactful moments here during these services is when we are seeing the removal of that casket right here in front of Central Church. When Nevada State Troopers Honor Guard also grab that casket remove it from the back of the truck, place it onto the walking dog as well, and they move it into Central Church. It is truly one of the most impactful moments where you can literally hear a needle drop. And you also truly see the emotions from so many of our community members. Of course, that procession is going to continue right now and it is heading here very, very soon. But the moment we see that procession arrive, we'll be providing you the very latest coverage so you can also see that as well. For now, we're gonna let you take in this moment for just a bit.
And as, as we watch this procession continue to make its way down Las Vegas Boulevard, we see the front of it actually getting closer to Central Church down in Henderson. But we do want to take a moment to talk about the importance of these flags you're looking at right now. These are, of course, the thin blue line flags. And Randy Sutton, retired Metro Lieutenant, we do want to ask you, you know, to talk a little bit about the symbolism and the importance of these flags. We've seen them a lot lately. You know, th th this is really something I, I'm, I'm very passionate about is what this flag means. This flag means respect. It, it, is, it is a flag that um, really gets deep into um, what it means to be a police officer. And that's, that symbol of that thin blue line in that flag is something that every law enforcement officer feels deeply. And you know, um, over the last couple of years, some of the, there have been s so many false reports about the, about what that flag truly means. And in this context, this is really what that that flag is is um, was created for to honor the service and sacrifice of America's law enforcement officers. That's really it in a nutshell. You know, when when I when I see some of the politics that have played into um, in, into protests over that flag, it's very, very hurtful for law enforcement because we know truly what it means. And what it means is just in this instance, it is being, those flags are being flown because of the sacrifice of these two troopers. And every time a law enforcement officer dies in the line of duty, those flags are so symbolic of, that, of their service and of their sacrifice. And that is what that thin blue line flag means. Nothing else other than, you know, the, the perversions of some of the politicians that have tried to pervert what that flag truly does mean. And we appreciate some perspective and insight into, you know, the feelings of the law enforcement community on a day like this that is so difficult to stomach. And you can see agencies across our, our Southern Nevada region uh, continue to honor Sergeant Abate as well. You can see Henderson Fire uh, is on this overpass at the 95 and auto show. We saw it at Valley Verde and the 215 giving that final salute to the sergeant because uh, the agencies, you know, all help each other here in, in trying to keep our community safe. It's kind of a symbiotic relationship between fire, police, EMS, as well as towing companies and uh, seeing those thin blue lines from the community as well as these salutes from different agencies. A testament to these people showing that they really honor and respect that service and sacrifice um, by Sergeant Abate. We expect to see this procession making its way to Central really any moment here as the family awaits the, the following procession as well. And from there, I know that the Honor Guard it begins their tradition as well. As soon as we see that casket arrive uh, on onto the property, what can we expect to see there? The, uh, there are honor guards there from um, many, many different police agencies. The lead will be the Nevada State Police Honor Guard. And as, as we saw the other day at, at, um, at the, the previous funeral, um, they were flawless. They were absolutely beautiful in, in the way that they showed their honors, uh, you know, removing the casket. What will happen here is um, when the, when the uh, pickup truck arrives that, that's holding the casket, they will be, the honor guard will be removing it from the, um, from the truck. And then, and, and you will see that their movements are very, very well coordinated. And it's done in strict military fashion. It, when it comes down to the honors, um, the law enforcement borrows its traditions from the military. And so uh, that's why you see the hand salutes. That's why you see, um, you know, the, uh, the, the fact that Almost everything is, is taken from the military taps, um, the uh, 21 gun salute, which will which will take place. And um, when when the vehicle gets there, they will remove the, the casket. It will be put onto a, a, a gurney, if you will, and then they will very slowly take the uh, take the casket into Central Christian, where it will be put on display at the front with the with the flag still draped over it. And uh, that, that flag draped coffin, of course, is very, very symbolic in, in and of itself. Once we're there and the, uh, uh, 
but even before the, the casting gets there, you will see the, the hundreds of police officers who are lined up on the route, the, you know, the, uh, the driveway of the, of the church. They will all be at parade rest until the vehicle starts its journey down that, that lonely lane. And um, the uh, uh, police officers will be brought to attention and then they will do what's called a slow salute. They will very slowly bring their hands up into the salute position as the casket goes by. And uh, once again, it's very, very symbolic. And right now we're taking a live look as you just saw the truck carrying the casket actually making its way really close up to Central Christian Church down in Henderson right now. Another point of tradition that you will notice today is that Nevada State Police on their badges, you'll actually see they'll have uh, their badges shrouded in this thin black line and they'll have the badge numbers 304 and 502 on them. Those represent the badge numbers of Sergeant Michael Abate, his is 304, and Trooper Alberto Felix, his badge number is 502. Really a symbolic way to uh, honor both of these troopers who unfortunately lost their lives on the same day. We've really talked about the magnitude of this loss. It's tough enough to deal with the loss of, of one trooper, of one person dedicated to serving our community, let alone two. And today is sure to be another heavy day with lots of emotions. Uh, right now we are continuing to watch the rest of that procession make its way down the 515 and soon we'll expect to see that procession uh, approach Central Church in Henderson. One thing I want to point out, we have Rachel Moore who is at Palm Mortuary downtown where that procession began. She's been watching all of this unfold and we pointed to Sergeant Abate's former career as a go-kart racer and uh, his sister saying he won many achievements in the 90s and that inspired her. Rachel says that a race car actually joined this procession wow. for Sergeant Abate representing his love for racing. It's a career that he left to join the force and protect our community. So this is going to be not only several police agencies, but you'll see a bright orange race car in, in this mix as well. Uh, really kind of honing in on not just his professional, but personal life as well. A man of many talents, a man with many hobbies. And that's something important to remember that he's not just NSC, NSP trooper or sergeant Abate. He was a husband and a father, a brother, a son. Um, a, a grandson and his loss will be felt in so many different communities, not just the law enforcement community, but now the racing community as well. It's really important to paint that picture of them as not just officers, right, but it, but as humans, as people who were loved by their families and their co-workers. So we are very much looking forward to, uh, you know, seeing that race car make its way down to the church and learning more from his colleagues and his loved ones about the type of person that he was. Right now we are getting word that the casket is approaching Central as we take a live look. You can see the front end of that procession making its way there in the distance and all of those honor guard members and officers ready to receive them.
Right now you are watching the procession for Sergeant Michael Abate. We are watching kind of the tail end of the procession make its way in. It'll be there in just a few minutes at Central Church. We've already seen the casket uh, getting ready to arrive there. Now this procession uh, started at Palm Downtown Mortuary at 930, a little before 930 this morning carrying the body of Sergeant Michael Abate. He is one of two state troopers who lost their lives back on November 30th. Police say they were hit by a drunk driver while trying to assist another driver. So a terrible tragedy, two terrible tragedies, in fact, that our community is dealing with right now. We do quickly want to tell you a little bit about Sergeant Michael Abate, what we know about him right now. He was born on December 22nd, 1985. He was just 37 years old, born in Las Vegas and lived in Henderson. Uh, his badge number was 304. You'll see that on the badges of Nevada State Police Officers today. Uh, he joined the department back in December of 2013, so 10 years of service to our community. And he was actually recently promoted to sergeant just last month. A leader say he was dedicated to serving his state with exceptional commitment and pride. And kind of reading the obituaries online, Kelsey, we've learned that he was a husband, a father, and he had a pretty interesting pastime as well. He did. He had a pastime as uh, someone who raced go-karts is what we've learned here. Uh, there are some articles with his sister, who's a professional race car driver, saying that she was inspired by him to get into racing because of his success doing so in the 90s and likely into the early 2000s as well. And that's why we saw a race car as part of this procession as well, an orange race car kind of honoring his love for racing, showing that this man is a skilled driver and someone who really kind of took that skill to protect us on on our roadways and on our interstates and freeways across the state of Nevada and we thank him for that and in that obituary is so many family and friends pouring in their condolences and talking about the man that he was you heard Abel saying some of his co-workers calling him intelligent and kind clearly a leader in the department it shows that because of his promotion his recent promotion uh, a leader in our community as well his family and friends saying he was such a great husband and father and they could see that by the loving smiles on his wife and children's faces. And uh, we are hoping to learn more about his personal life and uh, the man that he was during the service here that's set to get underway any minute here is the procession of the, the final cars make their way into the parking lot of Central Church here. They won't be able to start the traditions and begin the honor guard until every single part of this procession makes its way into the parking lot so that these dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of officers from across our country and across our state are there to witness this and say their final goodbye to Sergeant Abate. And as that procession has actually made its way down from downtown to Las Vegas Boulevard, the 215, and now getting to Central Church, they have been really enshrouded with the love and support of this community from the marquees on the Las Vegas Strip to folks uh, lining the Strip with thin blue line flags. So a lot of people also lining up just to watch that procession go by. We saw some folks on an overpass over by Auto Show in the 515 just a few minutes ago uh, wishing uh, Sergeant Michael Abate well as he makes his final journey and we say our final goodbyes to him. Uh, this is a look from Central Church in Henderson. That is where that memorial service will get underway. It's scheduled for 1030. Obviously, it's a, a few minutes past that, but we are expecting that service to get underway. Uh, preferably probably in the next 30 minutes or so I would imagine as we wait for all of those cars uh, and officers to make their way down to Central Church. Again, this procession is open to the public. So if you feel compelled to go and, and show your support and hear about the type of person that Sergeant Michael Abate was, you are certainly welcome to do so. They are also looking for ways to contribute to the family. The Injured Police Officers Fund is a good way to do that. That's IPOF.Vegas if you'd like to make some contributions there. And of course, we'll have cameras inside as well. So we'll be taking that service uh, live here on Vegas 34 as well on uh, channel 13 uh, so that really the entire community can can learn more about this leader in law enforcement as well and we saw on Friday dozens and dozens of uh, police vehicles as part of the procession and the service getting underway about an hour late but Randy that kind of speaks to uh, his his brothers here in law enforcement are not going to miss an opportunity to, to honor him in, in his final moments. There's uh, hundreds and hundreds of police officers here from all over the nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that, that uh, they come from literally 
all over the country is is part of the unity of law enforcement, and it's something that um, that is very poignant. You know the the fact that you know these these officers made journeys some thousands and thousands of miles. Uh, some drove their law enforcement vehicles. Some you know came by uh, came by by plane, but most of them brought their vehicles here also to be a participant in this procession because the procession is the is very symbolic in in the show of unity and so um, you know it's a it's a huge amount of time these guys are not getting paid for being here um, they're here on their own time and uh, just like all of those honor guard officers that you're seeing those are not paid positions those those are volunteer officers that go the extra mile because they want to be able to be in that position to, um, to say goodbye to the, their coworkers and their friends. Some really powerful images you're seeing here and uh, we expect to see the casket moving in any moment. So we're gonna let you just take this in here as we, as we watch the procession proceed.
Right now you're taking a live look at the parking lot of Central Church as agencies from across our state and across our country as far as Alaska uh, await the casket of Sergeant Michael Abate, the Nevada State Police Trooper who was killed on November 30th in a drunk driving hit and run crash. According to police, you can see the American flag there draping over where the procession will move in. Uh, we expect to see this casket uh, covered by an American flag and uh, honor guard beginning the the traditional uh, their traditions essentially in, in honoring Sergeant Abate in his final moments. And Kelsey, you mentioned that there are agencies, members of agencies from as far as Alaska here. Actually, our Rachel Moore, who was over at Palm Downtown Mortuary, which is where this whole procession began, she has uh, said that there are officers here from New York City, Boston, Miami, and of course, as far as Alaska, as well as so many officers here locally. We've seen uh, Henderson police and fire. Uh, so many agencies coming around to really wrap their arms around Nevada State Police as they deal with the loss of not just one member of their family, but two. And we have seen so many marquees all across the city show support for both of these troopers in the aftermath of this enormous loss for the community. It was Trooper Michael Abate and his colleague, uh, Sergeant Michael Abate rather, and his colleague Trooper Alberto Felix. Who, were both di who both died on November 30th. Now, right now we see this casket is arriving here at Central Church. We're gonna allow you to just listen in.
with this live coverage of today's procession and memorial service for Trooper or Sergeant Michael Abate. He and Trooper Alberto Felix died on November 30th. Police say they were hit by a suspected drunk driver while stopped to investigate a suspicious vehicle on the I-15 near the D Street exit. We just watched that procession move from Palm Mortuary in downtown to here, Central Church in Henderson, where we just watched taps as well as a missing man formation. Uh, hundreds of law enforcement officers heading inside the church to honor and say their final goodbyes to Sergeant Abate. And Randy Sutton, a retired Metro Lieutenant here with us right now. You kind of talked to us a little bit about the symbolism behind that missing man formation. And we see those three choppers in that very coordinated formation flying overhead. Tell us what exactly that means and the symbolism behind it. Sure. Uh, once again, borrowed from the military tradition, the, uh, the helicopters um, symbolize with the, the number of helicopters in the formation that was flying uh, is the missing man formation. And that means, you know, clearly that uh, the symbol is being that, 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 this, that, this, that this trooper is, uh, uh, is the missing man. And um, this is reserved for line of duty deaths. Uh, you know, when, uh, when, a when a police officer dies, if it's not in the line of duty, he will be afforded certain honors. He'll get the flag fold, he'll get the, uh, the taps, uh, there will be a, a ceremonial um, honor guard there. But when a line of duty death occurs, then you get this procession that you saw here and the missing man formation. And so it, there's, you know, the, the honor that is afforded someone for a line of duty death for a law enforcement officer, all the stops are pulled out. And there's symbolism and meaning behind really every aspect of this procession that we saw. And now as folks may make their way inside Central Church for that celebration of life ceremony, every little movement that especially the honor guard made just a few minutes ago has so much significance and meaning and really they maintain so much stoicism throughout it all even despite the fact that that many of these people are mourning not just one loss when it comes to nevada state police but two as kelsey mentioned both sergeant michael abate and trooper alberto felix were killed in the line of duty back on november 30th uh, police say they were hit by a drunk driver while stopped to assist another driver over on the i-15 near the d street exit it. So an enormous weight of loss that we're feeling in this community and just take a look at the amount of officers that have shown up to show their support for Sergeant Michael Abate's family, his colleagues and to mourn this tremendous loss in our community. An important uh, moment of symbolism that you're going to see as well on these Nevada State Police Troopers, their badges, they're actually going to be uh, draped in a little black line and they're going to have the badge numbers of both Sergeant Michael Abate, which is 304 as well as Trooper Alberto Felix. His badge number is 502. Like I said, so much meaning behind every aspect of what we're seeing here today. And so such a powerful moment as well, Kelsey. And if you are just tuning in here, we showed on, on our sister station, Vegas 34, the procession that began around 930 this morning. Just incredibly moving pictures here, seeing law enforcement agencies from as far as Alaska, retired and both active police officers, part of this procession in honoring Sergeant Abante and his service to our community. We know that he is a husband and a father, a son, a grandson, and also a leader in our community, proven by his recent promotion to Sergeant within uh, NSP as well. Uh, we were told that his co-workers telling Abel Garcia on scene there at Central that he was kind, he was intelligent, and really dedicated to his service to our community. Uh, we're looking forward to learning more about Sergeant Abante as this service gets underway here. Likely going to hear some personal stories about him and, and as well as his service through not only his colleagues, but possibly family members or friends as the service gets underway. It is open to the public, but we'll continue taking this service live for our community to also send their respects. So we've seen the thin blue line flags flown across our community, including near the Las Vegas welcome sign uh, and along the overpasses of our local freeways, the 215 in Valley Verde and 95 in Auto Show. We shot overpasses there with first responders from City of Henderson Fire Department, as well as just community members who were there saying their final goodbye and their final thank you for a decade of service 
to our Las Vegas community. Certainly a life taken far too soon. And Kelsey also mentioned just how far some agencies have come to show support for Nevada State Police. Uh, Rachel Moore, who was on the ground there at Palm Downtown Mortuary, reported seeing officers from as far as New York City, Boston, Miami, Alaska, so many people across the country sending their well wishes to this department that is really hurting again, not just dealing with one loss, but with two. And it's been really heartwarming to see how the community has rallied around this department as they deal with these losses. Again, seeing those marquees all down the Las Vegas Strip. If you're watching over on Vegas 34, you saw those marquees all down the Strip showing the photo of Sergeant Michael Abate and thanking him for all of his service. Uh, again, we're hoping to learn a lot more about who he was as a person, as a colleague, as a friend, as a father. We're hoping to learn about all of this shortly here as we wait for this memorial service to get underway. But hey, if you're watching and wondering how can I maybe show some support to his family? Again, we learned he's a father and uh, a husband as well. So if you're wanting to show some support to his family, which is undoubtedly dealing with, with a terrible, terrible loss, especially right before the holidays, you can do so by uh, contributing to the Injured Police Officers Fund. And uh, that is really the only approved donation point that we know of at this moment. So if you're looking to donate, you can go to IPOF.Vegas. Uh, really a good way to show some love to this family and wrap your arms around this family that is dealing with something so unimaginable. And uh, we have retired Lieutenant Randy Sutton here continuing to provide some insight about what this day means for law enforcement officers across our community and across our country. And undoubtedly, uh, as we're watching them filter into this church, it's a difficult reminder of the dangers of being on the force. It's a, uh, it's a, a wake up call once again. Um, you know, officers that are, that are, are participating in this, they, um, they feel this loss personally and it's not just professionally mm -hmm. and um, you know there there are many uh, who who knew him personally but most did not but what he what he symbolizes is the thin blue line what he symbolizes is the sacrifice made by uh, officers that uh, you know through the through the generations and, uh, and it's a heavy it's a it's a heavy weight um, each of these officers knows that Every time they put on that uniform, they too are are susceptible to violence and to and to uh, you know uh, the possible loss of life. And um, you know when when they attend a funeral like this, there's a great deal of camaraderie that that plays a role here. Um, you know there they, there will be tears. There will be um, you know people holding on to one another that. You know, for uh, for support, and um, and and uh, you know, the, the, one of the things that was brought up earlier, and I think is really, I think, really powerful, is the number of retired officers, literally from all over the country, that came to this funeral. Think what that means that that retired cops feel so deeply that even after they are retired from the job, they will still make a journey, literally across the country to show their respect and their love. And Randy, really, you're, you're one of those retired officers now after spending decades with the Metropolitan Police Department helping us honor uh, Sergeant Avante. And we thank you for that because uh, you had mentioned that you've gone to many officer funerals in the past. And, and this is something that is still difficult for you to this day. Um, watching this and, and seeing the loss of life in the law enforcement community. So uh, we have heartfelt appreciation for your insight here is it is a, is a difficult thing to to go through and to, to witness. It, it is. It is particularly difficult for me. I, um, you know, after 15 years serving on the honor guard here, I, I literally buried a lot of my friends and comrades and uh, uh, as you progress through, you know, the, the, the time and each one takes its toll on you. So I've been unable to really personally attend funerals since I retired. So this is, uh, this is a difficult time for me personally as well. 
And something a lot of people out there may not recognize is that uh, both Sergeant Michael Abate and Trooper Alberto Felix, they're not only going to be known here in Las Vegas and Nevada for what they did for our community, but they're actually going to get some national honors as well in Washington, D.C. So, uh, Randy, if you can tell us a little bit about uh, what we're expecting for them to receive, uh, I believe in May. Yep, May is um, when National Police Week happens. Uh, begins on May 15th, I believe, this year. And it's a very, very symbolic time for law enforcement because that is when the uh, families of the uh, every officer killed this year, 2023, will be invited to attend this massive ceremony in Washington at the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial. This is a um, a, a granite structure that bears the name of every single law enforcement officer who's died in the line of duty. And um, what will be taking place is the names of all the officers killed this year will be carved into that granite. And those names will be draped and at, at the ceremony, those names will be revealed. And I can tell you from many years attending this incredible service that when a loved one sees the name of their husband or their father um, inscribed in this in this you know massive granite memorial it is it is so touching and so poignant um, you know many times they'll they'll have a little piece of paper there and a, and a pencil, and they and they will literally, um, you know, uh, take the the name and they'll and they'll scratch it on the paper as well, take it with them. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's and then in addition to that, um, their names will be read at a uh, at a candlelight vigil. This candlelight vigil, I want you to see if you can, in your mind's eye, picture this: twenty-five to thirty thousand police officers all dressed in their dress uniforms at um, in in the in the, the darkness raising candles while the names of every single police officer who died in the line of duty this year is read and then taps plays it is it is haunting is is i think probably the the, the, the most opportune word that i can use to describe this and um, um, it's very very touching and there will be other avenues of celebration of life that uh, that will take place during National Police Week. And certainly we'll never stop celebrating and saying thank you to Sergeant Michael Abate for his service to our community. Right now we're watching it looks like the, the final few people heading inside of Central Church in Henderson. We are waiting for that celebration of life service to get underway. You can see those people making their way inside right now. And as soon as that service gets underway, we will take it live and allow you to watch it. Uh, certainly hoping to learn a lot about who Sergeant Abate was. We know for a fact that he was a dedicated member of the Nevada State Police, recently promoted to sergeant just last month. Uh, he had joined the department back in December of 2013, so he had been serving the community in this capacity for a decade. We also know he was a, a father, a son, a husband. So uh, definitely hoping to paint this picture better for better for you as the service gets underway uh, to learn more about who he was and what he meant to this community. But if anything, uh, looking at the amount of people pouring into this church right now, he certainly meant a lot. And some condolences have been pouring in on his obituary page. I mean, we've talked about the fellow officers who may not have known Sergeant Abate, but they are brothers just by being in that same uh, career and that same dedication to community. This one's saying, Sergeant Abate, we've never met, but we are brothers in service and shared the same calling. Together, we shared a desire to help and serve others in our community. You and your family have paid the ultimate sacrifice and you will never be forgotten. Your family will forever be in my family's thoughts and prayers. Rest in peace, Sergeant. We will carry the torch from here. So it is clear that this is touching law enforcement members from across the country and um, it shows that, you know, his dedication is not going unnoticed. We've also seen some friends of Sergeant Abate uh, pouring in their condolences saying that it was clear that he was a great husband and a great father by the loving smiles on his child and, and, and wife's faces as well. Um, and we know that Abel Garcia is outside of Central Church as well as uh, all of these traditions have, have gone on here. Uh, Abel, what, what are you seeing out there? 
You know, Kelsey, we just switched to the last little bit of people going in to Central Church here, right here behind me. But earlier, if you guys were not watching, I mean, just it's an impactful moment. Michael Abate's body was carried right on top of this car. And I just have to say, we can talk about just that impactful situation when we saw Nevada State Police honor guard grabbing that casket and removing it from the back of the truck to then move it inside of Central Church. But we believe we also saw Michael Abate's wife as well as his three-year-old son who was standing right by the situation. And just to witness the emotions that were running so high for these family members as they were watching their loved one being carried inside of Central Church. It is never an easy situation for us to be out here to witness this, you know, here in person. This is, is truly a devastating situation, let alone to lose a member of our law enforcement, not only one member of our law enforcement, but let alone two members of our law enforcement. We lived through this experience on Friday and here we are again doing it all over today. So it's been a very difficult situation, but also on the other hand, we witnessed just how much our community comes out to support this situation. I want you to take a look at this programming. We see Sergeant Michael Abate, just the impact that he had here in our community. I was taking a look at his obituary and just reading all the different messages, all the different involvements that he had, all the different impacts that he had, specifically within the department. You know, many of his, you know, co-workers and also his brothers and sisters within the department talking about the impact that he had there at work, always had a smile on his face, such a positive impact across every single person within that department. It's going to be a very difficult loss for them to continue moving forward without this significant leader in their department as well. But I also want you to take a look right down over here where Sergeant Michael Abadi's casket was carried in and on that back of that truck. Earlier, we just saw hundreds of different members of our law enforcement, that honor guard that was standing there saluting as that casket was carried through, arriving here to Central Church. And one thing that we were able to notice, as well as Randy talking about a little earlier too, is just the overwhelming amount of support from not only here in Southern Nevada, not only here in the state of Nevada, but really throughout the entire country. We saw law enforcement from Tennessee, from New Jersey, you guys mentioned it earlier too, even Alaska. And you can really just feel the warmth and the camaraderie from all these different members of law enforcement who were here today to support and pay their respects to the family of Sergeant Michael Abate, but also to honor this exemplary figure who has done so much in the 11 years that he was with our Nevada State Police here as well in Southern Nevada too. So it's just truly a significant loss that we are experiencing. And again, such a very difficult moment. I mean, we've seen hundreds of community members coming out to support, but definitely a very somber day here at Central Church once again, as we remember this leader in our community. I'll send it back to you. All right, Abel, thank you. Setting the scene for us there outside of Central Church in Henderson. Again, this memorial service for Sergeant Michael Abate is open to the public, and you can see that there looks like there's still some seats available back there. So if you're watching this and, and, and wanting to go and pay your respects, I would get over there pretty quickly because we do expect this memorial service to get started here pretty shortly. Now, uh, the memorial service and procession for Sergeant Michael Abate's colleague, Trooper Felix, Alberto Felix, rather, he was held on Friday and there we know we heard from his friends and family. We also heard from Governor Joe Lombardo. So really interested to see who shows up today and who helps us paint that better picture of who exactly Sergeant Michael Abate was. We know that he meant so much to this community and we're getting word now that this memorial service is getting ready to begin. So we're going to go ahead and listen in.
Good morning and welcome to Central Church. My name is Michael Kitchen and it's my honor to be able to serve the family this morning and also as one of the pastors here. On behalf of the Abade family, give thanks to everyone that made today's services possible. Special thank you to our community and the overwhelming support that you have shown everyone during these times. Thank you to the Nevada State Police Department and especially the entire Honor Guard. Today we celebrate the life of Nevada State Police Sergeant Michael Abade. We have lost a husband, a father, a son, friend, mentor, race car enthusiast, and community hero. Michael was the best of the best, and he dedicated his life to serving and protecting this community for over the last 10 years. We are all here to honor a man who's left behind a great legacy. This service will be where we can reflect on the memories that we got to spend together and all the precious moments that we shared. This will be a time where we can honor, remember, and celebrate the life of Michael. I'd like to begin our service, if you could join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now with heavy hearts. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to experience these times alone. Not only have you promised to come along beside us to be our shepherd and to comfort us, but you have blessed us with friends and family and the benefits of drawing strength from one another. So God, we pray that you will hold us in your powerful, caring hands during this time and be glorified in our lives. Grant us the comfort so that we may comfort others who are also hurting. We thank you, God, for Michael. We thank you for the opportunity to have known him in this life. We thank you for the legacy and the life that he has left behind. I pray for everyone gathered here today with grieving hearts. Help them release tears if they need to as they say goodbyes for now. And remind them that you are the hope in the midst of this pain. We pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite our first speaker to the stage, Governor Joe Lombardo. Thank you for joining me here today to honor and remember the life of Sergeant Michael Abade of the Nevada State Police. As most of us slept safely at our homes, Sergeant Abade was out protecting our community, bravely serving his fellow Nevadans when he made the ultimate sacrifice. As I said at the funeral of Trooper Felix, it's difficult to process and mourn these tragic losses. The outpouring of support from our community has been deeply moving, and it's deeply moving to see you here today. As just a small example of Sergeant Abadi's impact, I saw an interview he did this past February on Channel 3 here in Las Vegas. He was interviewed to talk about the importance of safe driving, and he spoke about how he taught a technical driving class for new Nevada State Police cadets. What stood out to me in this interview was Sergeant Abadi's passion for his job, his kindness towards others, and his natural confidence. Sergeant Abadi embodied the leading from the front, looks like in law enforcement. He led with humility, courage, and confidence, 
and our state will forever be indebted to him for his leadership and service. When I was reflecting on Sergeant Abadi's life and leadership, I was reminded of March Mika 6-8, which instructs us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. As a father, as a husband, and as a law enforcement officer, Sergeant Abadi provided a clear example of what a life centered around justice, humility, faithfulness looks like. We will never forget him, nor will we ever forget the sacrifice of Sergeant Abadi's family who lost a cherished son, husband, and father. As we mourn Sergeant Abadi's life, I pray that we continue to come together as a community to uplift the Abadi family and to support our brothers and sisters in law enforcement. And as we celebrate Sergeant Abadi's legacy of leadership, I pray that we honor his life with embodying the ideals he held close to his heart and service for others, faithfulness, and courage. As governor, I promise we will never forget Sergeant Abadi and that the state of Nevada will forever honor his memory. A promise. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Lombardo, for your amazing words of encouragement, your leadership, your love and dedication to the state of Nevada. At this time, I'd like to welcome up Nevada State Police Director, George Tagliati. Good morning, and thank you all for being here with us. On behalf of the Department of Public Safety, Nevada State Police, we offer our profound condolences to Sergeant Michael Abade's family and friends. We gather today with Michael's family, as well as his first responder brothers and sisters who have traveled from across the nation to be here to grieve with us and to honor his life and service. Sergeant Abade exemplified what it means to be a law enforcement officer. To begin his day in anticipation of engaging people at some of the most meaningful moments in their lives. To experience the rush and satisfaction of helping someone in need. The fulfillment in making a positive impact on our lives and on the community. Earning the respect from those who care about right and wrong. Enjoying the camaraderie with your partners, brothers and sisters in law enforcement. Developing a bond like no other all the experiences and feelings of pride and satisfaction offered by no other profession. Sergeant Abade was among our finest, a proud Nevada State Trooper, and we're grateful to his family and friends for supporting him in his outstanding career and doing what he loved. His dedication to serving and protecting Nevada has made our community safer and will leave a legacy for generations to come. The response from our community has provided strength and comfort for us all. The candlelight vigil, the messages, the flowers, the prayers, all of support at our Highway Patrol headquarters the outpouring of respect for his service throughout our procession this morning. Our tragedy and the loss of Sergeant Abade 
and Trooper Alberto Felix remind us how fragile life is. We stand together, united, and will honor the lives and the ultimate sacrifice of these heroes and will hold close to our hearts the legacy and courage and love. Sergeant Abade's act of bravery and courage will remain with us and continue to inspire us all. And now I would ask all first responders to please stand. Honor Guard Commander, please call the room to attention. Honor Guard, Uniform <coughs> Officer, Captain Fu. Today we will award Sergeant Michael Abade the Medal of Valor. The Medal of Valor certificate reads as follows. On November 30th, 2023, Sergeant Michael Abade and Trooper Alberto Felix exemplified heroism and dedication while assisting a motorist on Interstate 15. In a tragic turn, they were struck by a passing motorist. Their selfless service to the great state of Nevada will be forever honored as they paid the ultimate sacrifice. Their legacy of unwavering bravery and dedication lives on in their memory and spirit and they are all an inspiration to us. Lieutenant Colonel Martin Molesco will present the medal to Sergeant Abade's wife, Vanessa. To the Abade family, Michael's legacy and light will live on in each of you. The Nevada State Police family will forever stand with you. We will never forget the sacrifice of Michael Abade in his service to the community that he loved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director Tagliati, for your leadership with the Nevada State Police and the way that you care and love each and every member. If I could please welcome to the stage Sergeant Jesse Winder. I'm gonna to try to get through this. Uh, good morning, and thank you to everyone in, in attendance here today to honor and remember our friend, Michael Abate. Michael and I first met on a Monday morning in January of 2014. My academy class had just graduated and his was just beginning. So during those last few weeks that I was still in Carson City. Uh, we didn't speak much other than a simple, hey, how's it going, in passing between classes. A few months later, Mike had graduated the academy and was beginning his field training here in Las Vegas. His first FTO was Trooper Kelly Walkup, who was also on my squad. And for reasons that I can't explain, I recognized Mike immediately from the months prior up in Carson City. During his time in field training, we often worked calls together. And since I was a rookie myself and had just completed the FTO process, Mike would always ask me uh, for advice on how to handle different situations. After Mike finished his field training, 
There were a couple years uh, consecutively that we were on the same squad, working on the graveyard shift with all of the other rookies. It was during this time that Mike and I really started to become friends and not just coworkers. We were consistently lunch break buddies. If you work graveyard hours, you know that the food establishment options are extremely limited. And neither of us were fans of greasy bar food at three in the morning. But we quickly realized that the Wynn Hotel's EDR was the go-to place for breakfast. And we would go eat there together at least twice a week. When I think back, Mike and I ran a lot of hot calls together. But there were a couple of instances uh, that it, when I think of, I can't help but smile and laugh. And I'd like to share those stories with you instead. One time, Mike and I responded to a crash on the 15 near Sahara. When we arrived, we both noticed that one of the drivers involved had been drinking. Mike handled the crash uh, report and I investigated the possible DUI driver. For those in the audience that may not know, the second test administered during standard field sobriety tests is the walk and turn. So in short, you instruct your, your person to take nine steps, touch and go the toe forward, down the line, turn around, take nine steps back. After I, exp if, after I finished explaining and demonstrating uh, the test to this individual, the person took nine steps forward down the line and then nine steps backwards. And it was the best moonwalk I've ever seen since Michael Jackson. <laughs> While I'm watching this and trying not to laugh, I look over at Mike and he's standing off to the side, smiling and giving a little golf clap like this. I couldn't help but laugh when I saw that, quickly followed by pretending to cough to cover it up. Mike was the best driver that I've ever known, and that made him the perfect fit to be our EVOC coordinator and lead instructor. A few years ago, I had to go through an EVOC recertification, and it was out at the Spring Mountain Racetrack in Pahrump. For some reason, Mike scheduled the training in the evening in December, and none of the track's lights were on that night. So trying to navigate a racetrack in the dark using only your patrol car's takedown lights was not easy. During one of my first laps, Mike jumped into my passenger seat as my instructor. And of course, that's when I made a complete fool of myself, completely missed a turn, driving over the gravel median. But Mike had a way of making you feel better uh, even when you're embarrassed. He laughed at me, of course, but then said, it's okay, buddy. We'll get you all squared away on the next lap. Our friendship grew outside of work because we shared the love for boating. In fact, I'd credit Mike for the biggest reason that I bought a boat in the first place. When I was talking with him, prior to buying and he's trying to convince me to do so. Uh, my concern was that the high price of ownership would truly be worth it. He told me, you know that country song that says money can't buy happiness, but it can buy me a boat? That's true. <laughs> and if you knew Michael's taste in music, country was definitely not on any of his playlists. So I followed his advice and bought what we both considered to be my starter boat to see if I would use it enough. And that was quickly traded in for a much nicer speedboat. But just like in a car on the racetrack, I couldn't keep up with Michael's eliminator on the water. As we grew in our careers uh, and started to go in separate directions, Michael joined Southern Command Technologies and started working in the office doing various tech jobs. And I started working up on Mount Charleston. So we rarely saw each other at work, but when our days off aligned, we would always meet up 
at a beach in Lake Mead. And those are my fondest memories with Mike. We would typically greet each other with a friendly jab. I'd say something like, what's up, office cop? And he'd reply with, well, you're one to talk. All you do is play in the snow all day now. But that was usually the extent of what we would discuss work-wise. At the lake is where I got to meet his wife, Vanessa, along with some of his other relatives and friends. Hanging out with them on the water was always the highlight of my week. As we got a little older, I saw Mike turn into a family man. When he and Vanessa told me that they were pregnant, it was at the lake. After all the hugs and congratulations, I told him, I didn't know you guys were trying. And Mike replied in only a way that he could. He said, well, I, I wouldn't really consider us trying. It only took me one time. <laughs> His sense of humor was my favorite characteristic. I could picture him in my head the, the way that he laughed. He'd always kind of lean back. And it was one of a kind. I'm thankful that he and Vanessa invited me to their baby shower. And I couldn't be any happier when their son Vince was born. It was amazing to see him grow into such a loving father. I'm sure that dressing up in full-blown Ghostbusters, Luigi, and Jurassic Park costumes was totally his idea. But he always did it with a smile. Recently, he was promoted to the rank of sergeant. When he told me that he had been selected, I couldn't have been any happier. And I asked him that if he were to be given the choice to please work on Graveyard so we could work together again. And he did just that. It felt just like the good old days. At the start of our last shift together, he and I were the on-duty sergeants and we were holding a briefing with our troops at our station. While Mike was on his way, he stopped with an elderly woman in a disabled vehicle on the side of the 215 near Green Valley Parkway. And he sent me a text saying that he was gonna help her change a flat tire so he might be a little late. I think that epitomizes how much Mike cared for others. He was an incredible police officer and an even better person. In closing, I want Vanessa and the entire Abate family to know that this is not a day or a week long event, but a lifelong event. And you will always have an NHP family that cares for you and loves you. And to the police officers in the room, I know that we all have to maintain our rough and tumble exterior, right? But don't forget that it's okay to tell your brothers and sisters in blue that you love them. I'll go first. Mike, I love you and I miss you, buddy. Thank you, Sergeant Winder, for those memories, the stories, the laughter. You truly honored your friend well today. If I may welcome up to the podium, Ross Jones. So it's with heavy hearts that we say our goodbyes to a remarkable guy, our beloved friend, Mike Abade. But let us also remember the joy, laughter, and love that Mike brought into our lives. I actually first crossed paths with Mike 
in the fall of 2004 at UNLV. He had just graduated from Bishop Gorman High School and he knew some of my closest friends from their days in private school. One of our mutual friends, Mike Uriarty, had the great idea of uh, rushing the fraternity Phi Delta Theta. And right from, from the beginning, Mike stood out, not just for his infectious sense of humor, but for something deeper, his authenticity. His ability to speak right to your heart, raw, uncut, and without filter. Even during those initial fraternity meetings, Mike was never afraid to speak his mind, a trait that would define him throughout his life. Particularly, I remember the challenges he internalized during our first semester when he was hit with the daunting prospect of a $500 dues payment. I remember he would rationalize, why am I paying these dues? Where is the money going? What do I get exactly for $500? He never compromised on being true to himself. This authenticity became one of his greatest gifts and endeared him to many who appreciated Mike's straightforward nature. Mike sucked it up, paid the dues, and we rushed the fraternity that fall semester. In the spring of his freshman year, he would go on to meet Vanessa, and I remember him telling me all about it on campus and his excitement towards getting to know her. The following fall, those $500 dues popped up once again, but Mike made the bold, conscious decision not to pay, fully aware of embracing the consequences, which would bar him from being able to attend any meetings or events. In his words, and I quote, I'm not cheap, I'm frugal, Ross. And if you knew Mike, his frugality always paid off for something bigger and better. It was a testament to his principles and his ability to stand for something even if he was alone. <clears throat> During an initial meeting our sophomore year, he let the fraternity know that he would not be paying or participating. However, in an unexpected twist, another older seasoned member of the chapter James Maddy stepped in and covered his dues. And the reason why is he told Mike that he loved that he would speak his mind regardless of what the topic was about. Mike was effortlessly authentic in every arena of life, stood for something, and we all know that he would never be taken advantage of. Over time, Mike transitioned from being my best friend to something much more profound, a brother in every sense of the word. In fact, when we would meet new people, we would tell people that we were brothers and they would buy it because we had similar physical characteristics and mannerisms. He was the kind of friend you could always depend on, the one who shared your joys and shouldered your burdens. Mike's ability to listen and provide thoughtful insights became a pillar of support for many, myself included. While many knew Mike for his larger than life sense of humor, those who were closer to him understood the depth of his love for life. Mike loved Vanessa, his wife, since he had known since he was 18 or 19, and their three-year-old son, Vince. He was so proud of the boy he was becoming, and the last time I saw him in November at one of our friends AJ's birthday, he spent a lot of time showing us videos of Vince. He loved his sister, Michelle, his parents, Judy and Mike Sr., his extended family, and he loved his friends. Mike found joy in the simple pleasures of life, working in the shop on his latest project, racing at the track, going to the lake, knocking out items from his never-ending honey-do list. <laughs> and of course, when the mood struck, showcasing those unforgettable dance moves. So as we say our goodbyes, let us not dwell on the sadness of his departure, but instead celebrate the incredible person Mike was. Let us honor his memory by embracing life with the same authenticity, passion, and love that he did. Mike's legacy lives on in the hearts of all who knew him, and he'll be dearly missed. Rest in peace to my best friend and brother. May your spirit dance on forever in our memories. Thank you. Thank you, Ross, for sharing those stories and giving us an intimate inside look at Michael outside of his first responder world. If I may welcome to the stage at this time, Dan Norwig.
Whew. Mike could be getting a kick out of this because he knows this is not my, not my strong point here. Uh, my name is Dan Nordwig, a good friend of Michael's. I never imagined the outpouring of love and support one man could receive. Thank you all so much for being here to support Michael and Vanessa's family and friends. My relationship, my relationship with Mike goes back to when we met at 17 years old. I met Mike through our crazy friend Brett, this, ta this crazy tattooed guy over here. The three of us spent countless hours together. Mike was not always a police officer, and many of those stories are not appropriate to share today. <clears throat> I do have one that comes to mind that I would like to share. Out off of Racetrack Road near Brett's house at the time, the three of us were in my 94 full-size blazer, cruising around, not really sure what we were doing. Anyhow, we come up on this old rusty truck that looked like it was there for over 20 years. Full of car parts, axles, engine block, brake rotors, exhaust manifolds. So whatever reason I had a chain in the back, we hook up this truck and start dragging it through the desert. We're laughing our asses off watching this thing bounce all over the trail. So at one point we come to this turn, like every other turn, and my truck just stops. I mean stops. Threw us all to one side. <clears throat> it's almost dark at this point. We get out to see what had happened, and we see these car parts scattered everywhere. But the truck was gone. So we're looking around trying to figure out where the truck went and realized it had somehow caught this diagonal support cable for a telephone pole and rode this cable all the way to the top. So the truck's hanging from the top here. So being 16 and 17 years old, we didn't know what to do. So we got the hell out of there. <laughs> the next morning we went back to see it and it was gone. Never knew how it got down. I can only assume Nevada Power showed up. Fast forward many years later, we're both fortunate enough to be able to purchase land and build our dream homes not too far from one another. Mike and I followed each other's locations and I could always track him to see where he was. If he was moving, had someone stopped, or if he was home on his off days. He would use my location to see if I was on my way home from work. On many occasions, not five minutes after pulling in the driveway, I could hear him ripping down the street in his go-kart, in flip-flops, basketball shorts, no shirt, with a cooler and a couple beers. I will forever miss the sound of that go-kart coming up the street. Mike wasn't afraid to take on any project. He could fabricate, weld, run the lathe and mill, and an impressive engine builder. He even built his own 30 by 50 shop. He was so excited to finally have a place to build some awesome projects. Mike was a gearhead through and through, anything with a motor, and you had his attention. Mike meant the world to my family. My daughters loved him like an uncle. Madison, Mackenzie, and Mike, they called themselves the trio. If the three of them were together, all we could hear was laughing. Sonny, my wife, and Mike's banter was never ending. Mike always seemed to get the short end of the stick because he knew he had to be nice. Mike and Vanessa's little guy, Vince, is only three and will never get to see how cool his dad really was. My heart breaks for him. A new kart track at Spring Mountain is supposed to be complete sometime next year, and Mike was really excited to get the boys into karts. Vanessa? Vanessa might be the only person on the planet to put up with all Mike's BS at times. He was definitely an ask for forgiveness rather than permission kind of guy. Vanessa could go on for days about Mike's antics over the years, but Vanessa was Mike's steady. And I can say with complete confidence, Michael loved you with every ounce of his being. Vanessa, you have always held a special place in my heart, and since Mike's passing, that phrase takes on a whole new meaning. We love you, and we'll always be here for you and Vince. Thank you, Dan, for sharing those stories and uh, sharing your, your friend with us. At this time, I'd like to welcome Michael's wife to the stage. Please help me welcome Vanessa.
eyes on me right now. <laughs> I distinctively remember when Michael and I met in February 2006 at California Speedway. I was there not by choice, cheering on my brother while Michael was working as a mechanic for someone who happened to be on the same race team. By the end of the race weekend, Michael asked me for my number. I had just moved to Vegas from San Diego, and he was going to bring me out and introduce me to some friends. We had gone out a few different times, but there were never any friends. After confronting him with, do you even have any friends? He admitted he was holding out to see what this was between us because he knew his friends and didn't want our opportunity to pass. Well, the rest is history. We had 18 years of the deepest love, happiest marriage, and truest partnership that I could ever imagine. To know a life without him is my worst nightmare. We truly saw one another for who we are and loved one another at our best and worst. With him, I felt safe, loved, accepted, and appreciated. Our love was always simple. I was proud of the man he was and the life that we had created together. We had a beautiful future ahead with so many plans, and in the blink of an eye, it was all taken away. He was the biggest goof with the absolute worst and most comedic dance moves, frailing about his long, skinny chicken legs. Always had the best timing with his little cracks that literally made everyone around him laugh out loud. I know we're all going to miss seeing him sitting there, Indian style, and hearing his favorite phrase, spare me. Michael was the biggest gearhead, always looking for a new project, constantly in his shop at home, whether it was building a motor, changing my oil, or welding something up for a buddy. His shop was his man cave, and I would have to drag him out by threatening that I was going to burn the dang thing down if he wasn't inside for dinner within the next 10 minutes. Soon we will be getting into, into the slideshow, and I really did try to incorporate some of his favorite music, but his music he had a love for was beyond explicit to where they didn't even make a clean version. I would always have to get after him to skip and go to the next song, as majority of what, we were, what he was listening to was way too inappropriate for Vince. We even had a phase of Vince constantly singing, pushing P. Michael and our son Vince had a powerful bond. He wanted to teach him so much and already did in the short time he had with him. It was really brought to light for me just recently, seeing Vince at a birthday party, where on his own, he grabbed a toy gas can and went to fill up the toy truck, followed by setting it down, then grabbing the toy oil and opening the hood of the truck to top it off. They loved working in the shop together and building a car that Vince said was his. We plan to finish this project for Michael and pass it down to Vince. They love dressing up in Marvel costumes, being Iron Man and Spider-Man rocket launching Vince onto the bed that would make my heart skip a beat. He was so playful with him, but great about setting boundaries. Throughout devastation, my biggest sadness is that Michael will never, sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> Michael will never get to truly be a part and see his son grow up. To teach him his passion for racing, as our plan was to get Vince into karting next fall. And even if we still do it, I know it would just never be the same and what it was meant to be with his dad. Michael was a badass behind the wheel. Did I love being in the car with him racing around? Not so much, but that didn't stop him. He would always ask me, what, you don't trust my dr driving? Which I would respond, yes, I do, just not so much the obstacles around us, you're freaking me out. Our son, just as his data, is 100% speed driven. He loves zipping around with him, whether in the boat, go-kart, razor, or car. He constantly would tell his data with a thumbs up, you're a good driver, dada. As he graduated high school, oh, where am I? As he graduated high school, he realized it was time to put the helmet up. Sorry, I keep losing my spot. for a bit and look at life without racing. In his early 20s, he decided to get back into the seat and begin racing legend cars locally at LVMS. Racing was his absolute passion, and he was so proud of the EVOC program he created for NHP once it was handed over to him. He loved getting to share his knowledge and wisdom with his fellow troopers. At your next EVOC training, which I believe is in March because it's on my calendar, 
Take a lap for him, as I know he will be with you guys. Words cannot express how grateful and thankful we are for the love and support that has been given to us. The kindness that our families have been shown in this incredible, unfathomable, and life-changing time is humbling and appreciated. Our hope as a family is to have his memory live forever in our hearts and home and for Vince to never lose sight of the amazing data that he had. Our love for him will never fade and we will always find strength knowing he's always with us. Michael, my Sal, I love you forever and always. Please be seated. At this time, the, the family has prepared a video for everyone to watch and enjoy. And then at the conclusion, the honor guard will begin their ceremonies. I know there's quite a few little ones in the audience today, so I just wanna prepare you that during that ceremony, there will be a 21 gun salute. So just prepare their ears, please. Enjoy. Cheers to the wish. 
wish you were here, but you're not Cause the drinks bring back all the memories Of everything we've been through Toast to the ones here today Toast to the ones that we lost on the way Cause the drinks bring back all the memories And the memories bring back, memories bring back your There's a time that I remember When I did not know no pain When I believed in forever And everything would stay the same Now my heart feel like December When somebody say your name Cause I can't reach out to call you But I know I will one day yeah. Everybody hurts sometimes Everybody hurts someday yeah, yeah. But everything gon' be alright Gonna raise a glass and say yeah. Here's to the ones that we got Cheers to the wish you were here, but you're not Cause the dreams bring back all the memories Of everything we've been through Toast to the ones here today Toast to the ones that we lost on the way Cause the dreams bring back all the memories And the memories bring back, memories bring back your Memories bring back, memories bring back your There's a time that I remember When I never felt so lost And I felt all of the hatred Was too powerful to stop oh, yeah. Now my heart feel like an ember And it's lighting up the dark I'll carry these torches for ya And you know I'll never drop Yeah Everybody hurts sometimes Everybody hurts someday yeah, yeah. But everything gon' be alright And say, hey. Here's to the ones that we got oh, Cheers to the wish you were here But you're not Cause the dreams bring back all the memories Of everything we've been through oh, oh. Toast to the ones here today Toast to the ones that we lost on the way Cause the dreams bring back all the memories yeah. And the memories bring back Memories bring back your do You got me in a suit and tie I had to take a pull So I wouldn't cry You got a line out the church door Saying goodbye I, I. Yeah, I believe them when they say You're in a better place You had a wild side But you had amazing grace I know you're way off up in the clouds But if you could still hear me right now Till then, 
Henry 4304 status. Henry 4304 status. Henry 4304 status. This channel is code red for Henry 4304. No response to the status check. This is the final call for Sergeant Michael Abate. Henry 4304, do you copy? Attention citizens, friends, and family. Sergeant Michael Abate, Nevada High Patrol call sign Henry 4304. Lost his life while serving his community with dignity courage and valor. We thank him for his dedication, loyalty, and service to the citizens of the state of Nevada. Sergeant Abate influenced many for his unending compassion, respect for all people, and service in many facets of law enforcement. All those he served will remember him. Sergeant Abate, Please rest in peace. Know that your legacy will live on through your blood family, as well as your brothers and sisters in blue. Your sacrifice will never be forgotten. Sergeant Michael Abate, Henry 4304, your end of watch, 1042 time. It's November 30th, 2023. That's 0357 hours. Godspeed, sir. Rest in peace. We have it from here. Please be seated. Years ago, someone handed me a poem that I would like to read for Vincent today. And I also know that Trooper Felix's children are also in the room, so I'd like to honor this with them as well. And it reads, in the beginning, when earth was first made, light was created to show us the way. But with each new day came struggles and fear. Someone was needed to protect us all here. They would serve and save, whether night or day, and be strong and brave, never once to sway. They'd fight off darkness, 
to save us from woe. So on the eighth day, God made a hero. <clears throat> the Bible refers to God in many ways, particularly calling him the good shepherd and promises to comfort all of those who mourn. Wherever there are two or more gathered in his name, he is here. And Proverbs 3, 5 reminds us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Listen to what God is saying to us as we read his word and reflect on what is his promise for our hope today. 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All of our hearts are tremendously heavy right now. It's easy to become disconnected, confused, scared, and angry about a lot of things. Romans 12.1 says to us, do not let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Continue to stand the line. Continue to stand in the gap between good and evil. Continue to fight for what's right. This community needs all of you. It's extremely important that we stay unified as a community and pulled together in times like this. We must not allow the evil of the world to grab a hold of our hearts. You must remember that you are loved. At this time, I would like to ask if anyone called Michael family, friend, or a brother in arms, please stand with me in showing his family your continued support. Manessa, Vincent, the Abadi family, please take a moment to look around and remember from the days, the weeks, the months, and the years to come that this community stands with you and we will continue to be your light. I would like to ask everyone to please remain standing as we close our time in prayer. Please bow your heads and repeat softly in the privacy of your own heart. Lord, thank you for loving me. Lord, I believe in you, I love you, and I trust you. Thank you for protecting me every day that I wear this uniform. Lord, protect my heart and place a hedge of protection around me, my partners, and all of my loved ones. Give me the strength and wisdom needed each day to serve and protect the community you have entrusted me with. When duty calls me to danger, be with me and give me the courage to overcome. Lord, I give my life to you. Thank you for giving me this day and all the days to come. May everything that I do bring honor and glory to your name. Lord, thank you for Michael's life and all the years we shared with him. We lift him up to you today in honor of the good we saw in him and the love that we all felt from him. Please give us the strength to leave him in your care we ask for your comfort today. Amen. At this time, we ask for everyone to remain standing and at their seats while the Abade family that was a part of the original procession is escorted out by the honor guard.
This is the conclusion of the services today. There will be no gravesite. There will be no procession out. On request of the command staff, please wait 10 minutes before exiting the property. And on behalf of Central Church, it has been an absolute honor and privilege to be able to serve you in this community today. If there's anyone that needs additional prayer or just someone to talk to, we'll be available out in the, in the lobby this afternoon. And once again, thank you for joining us in celebrating the life of Michael Ambade. God bless you. You were just watching the celebration of life service for fallen Nevada State Police Sergeant Michael Abate. Really such an emotional ceremony there. We heard from the governor, from Sergeant Abate's friends, his family, his wife, uh, about the type of man he was, what he liked to do outside of work, like racing and boating, and really just such a, a moving display of support there from the whole community, wrapping their arms around the fallen Nevada State Police Sergeant Michael Abate. Before we go, we want to say a big thank you to you again, Randy Sutton, for joining us helping us navigate through the coverage of not just this, but another trooper's funeral last Friday. The UNLV shooting coverage, it's not lost on us that this is difficult for you as a former Metro Police Lieutenant, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. I appreciate the honor that you gave this, uh, this sergeant. Yeah, Randy, thanks again for your insight here. Certainly something that we do not take lightly in your perspective and the importance of this day in remembering Sergeant Abate and, and his service to our community. and. Uh, his ultimate sacrifice, really, his friends and family describing him as authentic and confident with a larger than life sense of humor. Incredible to hear the stories about his life and the memories that his family will hold on to. We'll continue to wrap our arms around the Abate family as well as the Felix family as they mourn their loved ones heading into this holiday season. A reminder that if you are hoping to help those families, you can head to the Injured Police Officers Fund website. Uh, that is the verified uh, donation site to helping families as they head into this holiday season. And a thank you to the community members who tuned in today to honor our Sergeant uh, Abate and to honor Trooper Felix as well and saying thank you to their community service over the last several decades. Uh, we'll continue with regularly scheduled programming and we'll be back at 3 p.m.